still doesn't exist, the actress says. He is a foreigner, a total stranger, says the actress. They meet abruptly without any preparation. A summer evening seems to be at the heart of the affair. speak first. Why are you crying? I lost someone. Now you're alone? Yes. I guess we're in the same situation. Shall we walk? Your eyes are still red. So are yours. What a coincidence. Where are you from? Mexico. The man I was crying about, he went to Mexico. He should be there by now. He had to go. He said he was coming back very soon, but I don't know. The person I am missing must be far away, too. I've been looking all day, all around town, for someone I've only seen once. Someone who has to come back. He would say, I'm waiting. Stay with me.
love anxiety is as tiring as hard labor. They're exhausted and they need a good sleep. Only by chance she would ask if she could spend the night at his house. He wouldn't be interested to know her name. He just wanted to watch her sleep. To weep together is to flow together. It's enough to share the night. That's what he must have thought. She would be lying on the couch in the middle of the room, her body tilted to the side, her mouth slightly open. The house where they are has not been lived in for a number of years. They would stay in a living room encumbered with old furniture covered with dusty fabrics. The room overlooks the sea and the beach. I have to go. I have an appointment. I would like you to sleep here every night. I will pay you for the time you spent here. You don't need money. I'm rich. I'm a famous actress. Don't you recognize me? I want to pay. I want to be able to use your time as I like and to send you away when I feel like it. As in a business contract. I'll stay because you are in despair. unknown lover. Her weight would be futile. Maybe a little pathetic. Place for mourning, for waiting that must be prepared. A space that has to be cleared. She picks up the sheets and takes them to the dark part of the room. She swathes herself in them completely and lies down. Always tired, too exhausted. You disappeared for two days. You didn't respect our contract. What contract? You have to come here to sleep under the light. <sighs> he has never seen a woman sleeping. He looks intently. He is afraid, scared of this woman he doesn't know or understand. He wanted the contract to be able to control her, but now he doesn't know what to do with her. She has refused the contract. She comes to sleep, just to sleep. Sleep relieves her sorrow. Don't. I was just looking. You surprised me. I'm not used to this. You remind me so much of the man I'm missing. I know. You too. 
Your eyes have the same blue as his. I have never desired a woman. Never? Never. How can you be so sure? Because. Why? It's terrible. I don't understand. Thinking she wasn't listening, sometimes he would ask her questions while she was asleep. From her sleep, she says, He said he had come to California because he had to flee from someone or something. I don't know. I didn't care. He was so beautiful. She fell in love with the I mysterious man, the impenetrable. The unattainable, told me many the incomparable, stories and the not to be found. She compelled him to possess her. Like they met in a bar and lived in a hotel room for one week. She knew that he was a misfit, another foreigner without ground, that he was beautiful. He told her many improbable stories. He said he was a thief, an outlaw. She laughed at him, but she liked to listen to his stories. And then the day came when he had to go. She had the man promise her to come back. They agreed for an appointment at the park every other Saturday. She said she will wait for six months, then she will stop. Why do you want me here? Because your desire is elsewhere, like mine. Why the contract? For the nights wasted together. This silent, desireless relationship left her time for remembering her lover. She would reflect upon her the mechanical cause of her desire. I mean, all those details that gave her the unreasonable pleasure that she felt with him. His hair, his name, the way he walked, the chin, the tone of the, the voice, of the, the color of the, the, skin, of the bottom, the, point the smell of the fingers, sea, the, the echo of the ocean. Thighs. The smile when he said, the screams in the forest, the sunset of the water, when he looked the cause of the birds, the form of the neck, the Indian name, the, the, the left. He said, I loved him. She said she loved him. I loved him right away. There is a sort of rivalry of desire between them. While her love has been sensual and real, his is mystical and imaginary. It's been transformed into a languid and ascetic passion. Later, she would ask him how he fell in love with the man. He would go back to the coffee shop, now, to the instant of the glance, and remember. I see him. It was in a coffee shop. I was bored and alone, cut off from the rest of the world. Unreal. Different in the sex and in the head. Afraid of not being a man. He came in with a gun to steal. It only took a moment. It was as if only he and I were there. He 
grabbed my medallion. I wanted to follow him. What is left of that day is the absence of the medallion, the constant reminder of the absence of his lover. Ironically, for her, the absence is signified by the presence of the medallion. But they wouldn't know. You're on a ship sailing south. A storm hits the boat, and you end up in a desert island. Your only company is dreams and memories. What would you dream? What do you do when you're not here? Didn't I tell you I'm a writer? I'm writing a novel set in the future. She never tells the truth. She simply doesn't know it. She would be writing about the people that walk at the beach at night. About their crude cruising involving people of both sexes and all ages. Often the police raid the beach to stop them. See those people walking the dunes? They can hardly see each other. At times, she would say, when she is hopeless. She understands why they prefer to risk their lives with strangers rather than be trapped by the complications of love. I believe she feels that the cruising is less indecent than the lack of desire. Maybe. And yet there is some sort of love forming between them, a special kind of solidarity based on the common absence rather than on reciprocal desire. Maybe. Perhaps when their fingers brush accidentally in their sleep, there is even a hint of desire. There are days in which she has to go away from the room. The languid alternation of days and nights give her a sort of sleeping drunkenness. She visits her mother because there she can pretend that she hasn't grown up. Her mother does annoy her with pointless recommendations and trivial problems. But she lets her speak because this makes her feel better. I spoke with Mr. Bryan. He said that you can work for him if you want to. Mom, I've told you hundreds of times, I'm not going to work with anyone. Don't worry about me, all right? Why are you doing this to me? Why did your father leave me here to take care of you all by myself? Why is everything on my shoulders? Lisa, you remember Dr. Morgan, our neighbor? He had a CVA. A CVA. He had a cerebral vascular accident. He was working late one night. His wife told me that she got up in the middle of the night. He wasn't in bed. She went to look for him. She found him. Lying over the desk, curled up like a little boy asleep. So a life dedicated to family and to work comes to a stop because a miserable little vessel decides to break overnight. You smoke a lot and he ate a lot of meat. She's 
afraid that the daily worries that afflict her mother may suffocate her. Now she has a little patience for her mother's emotional breakdown. She listens without getting involved. She knows that she doesn't want to become like her. I just want you to be settled. I care about your future. Mother, my future is fine. Don't worry. I never know when it's day or night. What day is today? I don't even remember when I'm supposed to go wait for him anymore. It's terrible to live the way we do. There is nothing to read. No papers, no radio, no television. Nothing. We're completely cut out of the world. We're dead. Wasting our time in this relationship. It's going nowhere. When it's all over, we won't even remember what we did. This kind of love destroys everything. It's impossible anyway. What are you talking about? I'm tired. I want to get out of here. I did not know before. He had felt desire for her for the first time. He wanted to try. He remembered what she had told him a few days earlier. She told him to come to her during her sleep, pretending that she was the man of the robbery. She said to him to try to enter her, slowly enter, then stay there and wait. Just wait and see what happened. You have to leave. I can't have you here anymore. I want to be alone. One day you'll have to. Even if only once.
Why are you always so tired? I've been with another man. I had to. But I thought of you all the time. I don't want anything from you. I'm leaving. I know you don't want anything from me. You never wanted anything from me. That's why we can live together. You don't want anything from me, and I don't want anything from you either. And that's why you were my lover. A lover who doesn't love. A perfect lover. Last week, I forgot to go wait for him. I've started to forget his face. I don't even remember what he said before leaving. At a certain time of day, in the late afternoon, there is no longer any noise around the house. With the low tide so far away from the room, all you can hear is the regular beat of the surf without any echo. While this respite lasts, there is no barking of dogs or rattle of trucks. If the object representing the absence was to be found now, the gradual, involuntary approaching of the last nights would come to a stop. to know your name, your age, what is your job, where you live, why are you here? Stop telling me lies. Where did you get this? It's mine. It was a present. He gave it to you. Who is he? So we've been crying for the same man. We were looking into the same blue eyes and we didn't know. Or maybe you knew and you didn't want to tell me. You know where he is. I have to see him. Do you really think if I had known, I would have come here? I don't know. I don't know, really. I only know I'm supposed to go wait for him every other Saturday at the park. At six, I think. You think? You mean you don't remember? No, I don't remember. I've been there several times. Maybe I forgot the place or the time. I'm not sure. Maybe he'll never come back. I don't care anymore. We have to find him. He's the only way out. Oh, I don't want to go. We have to go. Together. Come. What will you do if he comes? What do you expect? I don't know. I have to see him again. Today is Saturday. I know. You said you wanted to help me? Now is the only time you can.